One thing that's important about what we talked about in the last section is that these rules, these properties relating number of standard deviations and area under the curve are very specific to normal curves. And this do not necessarily hold up in non-normal data. And this is a very commonly made mistake that for any set of continuous data, I can use the mean plus or minus two SDs to get a range that estimates 95% in the middle of my population. And that only makes sense is if the sample gives some indication that the data sampled comes from a normal distribution at the population level. In truth, there's really nothing special about standard normal scores. We can compute them for any data, and they're really nothing more than measuring how far an observation is from its mean in standard units of statistical difference, in standard deviations. We can do this for any data, and it sort of is a recognizable metric, a distance. However, unless the population or the sample which we're studying is taken from such a population that has a well-known, well-behaved, like a normal distribution, we may not be able to use the mean and standard deviation alone to create interpretable intervals or measure the extremity of individual observations. Let's go back to our hospital length of stay data. Suppose we're looking at that random sample of 500 patients. We have a mean length of stay in this sample of 4.8 days, a median length of stay of 3 days. So right then and there, we know we're dealing with a pretty heavily, positively skewed distribution and a standard deviation of 6.3 days. And here's a list of some of the values, the first 10 values in the data set in the state I called the variable HOSP stay. If we run the summarized command on this data, we get the mean and standard deviation I gave, but we don't get the median. So one way to get a little more information out of your summarized command is to put a comma at the end and put the word detail. And in doing that, we not only get the mean and standard deviation, but we get a little more information, including some key percentiles in the data set, including the 50th percentile or the median. Let's refresh ourselves with what the distribution of these values looked like. We take the histogram of the sample data, and now we see what our numbers gave some indication of, that we've got a pretty right skewed or positively skewed distribution. So suppose I want to use this sample data to estimate an interval containing roughly 95% of the length of stay values for all patients discharged in that same year from that teaching hospital. Well, this is clearly data not from a normal distribution. The random representative sample shows strong evidence of a right skewed distribution. So I cannot necessarily appeal to the properties or methods of a normal distribution. Let's just see what happens if I do. Suppose I said, oh, I know what to do. Just take the mean and add and subtract two standard eaves because that's what John told me to do in the last section. So go ahead and do this. 4.8 is the mean plus or minus 2 times 6.3 days. But if you do this, this actually gives an interval of negative 7.8 to 17.4 days. Does that make any sense? Well, length of stay is something that can never be negative, and certainly not to the extremity of negative 8. If you ever have a negative length of stay, then you expect the hospital to send you money. So let's just go back on this histogram. You can see that that interval includes a lot of points outside the real realm of the data and includes impossible values. So we would need to estimate this interval in a different manner. A better guess would be just looking at the histogram and trying to eyeball the range that contains most of the data under that curve. But a more formal way to do it would be to taking the relative percentiles of our sample data. If we want the middle 95% of our sample the data set, then we basically want to pick off the range between the 2.5th percentile and the 97.5th percentile. Think of it this way. The 2.5th percentile is the value in our sample which is greater than 2.5% of the data and less than the remaining 97.5. And the 97.5th percentile is the converse. It's greater than 97.5% of the data and less than 2.5% of the data. So together, the 2.5th percentile and the 97.5th percentile, between them, they cut off the middle 95%. So there's a command in Stata called centile, 
and the syntax is centile, and then you give the variable name, you put a comma, you put the letter C, and then in parentheses, you put the value of the percentiles you wish it for it to display, as many as you like. So here I type centile hosp stay, comma C, and then in parentheses 2.5 and 97.5. And what I get here is an interval one day to 23.47 days. So based on this sample data, we would estimate that 95% of the discharged patients had a length of stay between 1 and 24 days. I just rounded up since the days length of stay is can only be in discrete numbers, integer numbers. So I rounded 23.475 up to 24. But you see, that's a very different interval. It's, it has a much longer upper range than the one we got from adding and subtracting two standard deviations to the mean, and its lower value is still in our range of plausible values. How about if I ask you this? What percentage of the patients had a length of stay greater than five days? Well, let's see what we would get if we used the approach we would do for a normal curve. So suppose we compute the z-score for this. z would equal 5, our observation, or our cut point of interest, minus the mean of 4.8, and divided by the standard deviation of 6.4. The z-score is 0.3, where only our result 5 days is only 0.3 standard deviations above that mean of 4.8. So assuming normality, this would actually suggest that nearly 50% of the patients had a length of stay greater than 5 days. However, if we go and look at the percentiles, 5 days is the 75th percentile of the data. I'm just looking at that results from that summarized command again. Five days is the 75th percentile, so only 25% in our sample have a length of stay over five days. So we would grossly overestimate that if we applied the results that are useful for normal curves to non-normal data in this case. So the point of this mini lecture portion is that these ideas that we discussed in 2B are great, they're useful, but only when we have data that behaves like a normal distribution. We're going to see that there are certain things where that will be really helpful in the next set of lectures. Certain things that we haven't talked about yet will behave like a normal distribution in all cases, and we will really start to use this. But real-life individual data frequently doesn't follow those rules, and therefore before taking a look and making statements about the data based on summary measures alone, we want to make sure we're dealing with the appropriate type of data. Otherwise, there's better ways to do it, as noted in this section.